Good afternoon, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session, Rumination with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining as we are about to discuss a very important topical matter. And this afternoon, we shall be looking closely at the fact that crime and violence are out of control in Jamaica as we speak. Now, there is an, an out-of-control understanding of where we're heading as a nation as we see gun violence on the rise. It doesn't seem like our authorities, that's the political authorities, have a lid on the problem. They seem not to be able to understand what is happening or they perhaps do not have the manpower, the will, the determination to reduce as much as possible gun violence in that country. Now, this has been a longstanding problem, the problem of gun violence in Jamaica. We have one of the highest homicide rates in the world. Need I say more? And I think that we continue to speak scholastically, right, and intellectually about the problem while we are not addressing, we have not yet come up with viable practical solutions to solve this high murder rate that is so prevalent on the island. Now, it's interesting that the prime minister is gathering this company from Spain, a Spanish-based company called Bloom, to improve Grand Jamaica, the image of Grand Jamaica. Now, how can the image of Grand Jamaica be improved on if we have not yet begun the process of reducing crime and violence. I would like to ask a question. I found it very interesting that the government would be engaging a company in Spain, say there's a Spanish-based company named Bloom. You can go online and you'll see that. Just say the Spanish-based company Bloom to improve image of Jamaica or to, yeah, that's what they are tasked to do or with doing. Now, the fact is that that is to me absurd. But that is how our governments think, and they waste money by doing these things, and it's almost like Jamaicans are left um, unaware of what is happening, and it's an impossibility for us to take care of our own or to solve our own problems. Now, how can that company improve the image of Jamaica? I don't know. I don't think that they will be able to do that. And the government should understand that. The government is aware of that. But they're going to pay these people, right? I'm sure this company is going to charge a whack, right? A huge sums of money, huge sums of money to uh, improve Grand Jamaica. Now, what is this Grand Jamaica? There's nothing called a Grand Jamaica. Jamaica doesn't have any brand, right? The brand that it has really is that it's one of the most murderous countries in the world. And that its economy is poverty stricken, in spite of the fact that we have said that the IMF has done this great job and our macroeconomic stability is great. And then, you know, let me not get into the, you know, the, the Nigel Clark's interview with, with um, Dion Jackson Miller. That was atrocious, right? Atrocious. And she did not really ask him the hard questions, but he looked nervous even when she was asking him that she was going to show him a video which was actually a stunning video of what jamaicans had to say about his legacy and about his tenure in that office as minister of finance which was all glowing telling saying that he had done a great job <laughs> that's what they said and but before he had heard that he was a bit nervous because I am sure that Nigel Clark understands that he has done a catastrophic and a job that is very, very below standard. But Jamaicans don't understand what high standards is all about. And we think that whatever the IMF says is gospel truth and that we need to listen to them because no pain, no gain. <laughs> no pain, no gain, right? We have to go through some pain. The fact of the matter is that we have been going through this pain from the devil was a boy, right? From slavery until now, we have been going through the pain, not to mention after we became independent, after gaining a political independence from Great Britain in 1962. We have been on this road of pain, and every time all these successive governments come and they tell us that there is no pain, no gain, 
And what we see of them is that they pack their bags and go with billions of dollars in their pockets, right? While they leave the ordinary man on the streets to suffer. And we are now seeing the effects manifested through crime and violence. Because we're seeing now a population that is largely uneducated, uninformed, living a debased and depraved life in these depraved communities, right? And that is why we're seeing that these are nests, as it were, of crime and violence. They're hotspots where we're seeing the palpable manifestations of crime and violence. And nobody wants to talk about it. All the government has to do, and the only strategy they have right now is to impose these unconscionable curfews, which are affecting law-abiding people and law-abiding citizens who want to get up and work and to carry on with their daily lives. But the government is going to tell them that, well, if you want your life secured, you have to be, you have to live in a prison. Because the only solution in Jamaica right now to solving crime and violence is our, our curfews. That is the only solution. Andrew Holness has no other solution, even though he has he has done his PhD in in um in in crime and violence and the inflows of guns into the country. But he has no solution. He's bereft of any solution because these people are not intellectuals. They pretend to be. And they have these titles, but they mean absolutely nothing, right? For all intents and purposes, they mean absolutely nothing because they're brain dead, right? And he's working for his global masters, right? His financial masters. So whatever they say, and of course, Jamaicans have to be deprived of basic human rights, of a basic standard of living. We know what how to solve if we want to solve crime and violence, yet we've sent our troops over to Haiti. We've sent our troops over to Haiti because we want to help them to control their crime and violence. We want to help them to control the gangs, which according to the international press are responsible for the high rates of crime and violence, the high levels of crime and violence in Haiti. Right? That's that was the purpose for which we were sent. Yet we can't. In Jamaica, the politicians do not have the ca capacity, do not have the manpower, do not have the understanding, the knowledge to reduce crime and violence on that in that country. Right? So we have in sections of Kingston here and St. Andrew problems with crime. And this here, this newspaper opens up this morning with an article written today, Monday, November the 4th, 2024, saying that the title was Shattered Peace. Residents give up hope. They give up hope for continued calm between St. Andrew communities after gun attack leaves three dead. Upset that seven years of relative calm have been broken with Saturday night's mass shooting incident, which left three people dead on Bowen Road, Kingston 11. Residents say they no longer have an interest in maintaining efforts at keeping the peace with their Crescent Road, with their Crescent Road neighbors. So they're saying that they are no longer interested in keeping peace because the peace is not working. And our politicians have not served them well, have not educated the people have not uplifted the standard of living. So all people are seeing, they're living in these co communities that really have nothing, right? Where they cannot really live any with any level of decency and civility. So the residents of the St. Andrew community are further incensed by posts on social media reported by men from Crescent Road in which individuals are seen boasting that the men from Bowen Road had to run. So it's all about pride. And if, if you have to run, you're dissing me, right? So once you diss me, then I have to kill you. This is the sort of mentality because of a lack of education, a lack of civility, a lack of humanity, of humaneness, of having a sense of decency, and respect for life, right? So they have to kill because somebody said they have to run. What if you have to run? 
What if you have to run? I don't think I'd be afraid if I see marauding criminals coming at me and I could run and get away. I'm going to run, right? Just like you're running from these wild animals. And if you can get away, of course you're going to run. What are you going to stand up there to challenge people who might kill you? Why would I need to not be, I'll be proud of that if I get away. Now, these people know they should have stood up and it's, you know, you're, you're affecting their, their egos. A three people dead and five people, their hospital. What do you think are going to happen? You think the community really are going to sit down and take it? One resident said as he sat along the roadway with other community members, right? So they're about now to unleash their vengeance on the other community, right? So the residents claim that the men were armed with rifles and chased, shot, and killed the victims, right? So these are people who are dying every day. And every day you open or you begin to read social media in Jamaica, this, the, you, all you see is the RIP, R-I-P, right? And when you look at the people who have died, young people, 16, 18, in their early 20s, dying daily in Jamaica. Not the elderly are dying there, but mainly young minds, young people are dying every day in that country, right? So what is happening to us? What really has gone wrong with the island of Jamaica? How are we going to clean up the mess that we've found ourselves in? Because something has to give and no amount of international branding as we're trying to do now, wasting money that could have been used to plow into education and to plow in reducing crime and violence. We're now going to give that money to an international company based in Spain to improve our image on the international sea. Right? This is the sort of prime minister that you have who is leading a nation, right? Who is bereft of any policy decisions to curb the high levels of crime and violence in the country. He's about now to waste Jamaican hard-earned money. And by the way, I was reading another article in which they were saying the World Bank was behind the suggestion, the decision to have Andrew Honus pay somebody to improve Jamaica's brand on the, on the war stage. So to attract international investors. <laughs> I mean, and if we have, you know, God, I will hope God willing, you know, because at least it's a little money. Some a little money is better than none. But if we should have a thousand investors tomorrow there, not going to improve anything for the other Jamaica. Because all they're coming there to do is to buy off our land and to buy off our prime assets. They're not there to share their wealth with you. You know, get some crumbs. But that's crumbs as we're seeing based on the hotels that we're seeing down there and other investors there are really not helping to develop the nation as, as it were, right? It's extracting the wealth from Jamaicans and leaving them in depressed and depraved communities, just like we see in Crescent and the other community that is that are warring against each other. Warring against each other. And all the government is going to come up with is our curfews. You have to go inside. They will absolutely, and they'll try to protect as best as possible these investors at your own expense. So we've got to wake up now, Jamaicans. We've got to wake up. This cannot con This is out of control. This crime and violence is out of control. And you are the ones, the citizens have to demand from the politicians that something need to be done. Something has to be done right now. Something, some policy has to be crafted and they can't just sit in parliament and just grandstand as they like to do. And then you pay them money. And the other day, what's his name? And I think I made a video on that, you know, where Dr. Delroy Chuck was saying that Andrew Hollis does not need taxpayers' money because he, al he already has made great investments, good investments on which he has, you know, he has received great returns, right? So they're actually mocking, the politicians in Jamaica are mocking the Jamaican people and they're not taking you seriously. You need to take your country and yourselves seriously because no amount of international branding 
is going to do anything to improve the global image of Jamaica as a poverty-stricken, crime-infested country. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you'd like, share, and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you on another video. All the best to you. See you then. Bye.